here's for my boy Sep. Um, we're about to do some real, uh, some real uh, grade three shit. So, hope you're ready. Okay. So, I want you to consider a big box. Okay, get the laughs out of the way, Sep. Um, that contains three smaller boxes. Okay, I'll allow for some more laughter here. Okay. So, there's... Oh, oops, I've found my first error. Okay. So, there's going to be one type A box, and there's going to be two type B boxes. So, as you can see, what makes a box a type A box is that it has one red and two blues, while the type B boxes have one blue and two reds. <clears throat> okay, so here's the problem. From the big box, you're going to select a small box at random. Now, I've made boxes that don't have lids on them and that don't have sides so that you can see what balls are in the box. But the whole idea here is this is about like probability and uncertainty. So in real life, you know, this would just be a box with a question mark on it. And when it comes to drawing a ball, you would uh, like remove the lid just enough to grab the ball, but you wouldn't actually be looking and seeing, right? Okay. So you pick a box at random. You pick a ball at random from that box, and you look at it, and it's blue. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to state the prior probability of the, quote, box random variable. Okay, so the probability of picking a type A box, obviously there's two outcomes for the box random variable. You could either have a type A box or a type B box. Um, the probability of getting a type A box is a third, and the probability of a type B box is two-thirds. And I've done this deliberately um, because a lot of the time when we get these Bayes' theorem problems, the events end up being equally probable. Like when you do your um, your five coin problem, uh, there's no like weighting of those outcomes. But I think it's important to see that in like a ge more general, well, this isn't a very general problem, but like in general in a Bayes' theor theorem problem, it isn't necessarily the case that the outcomes of the sort of highest level on the hierarchy random variable, that doesn't have to be equal probable. Okay, next we want to state the conditional probability, um, probabilition, what the f was I smoking? Probabakush? Probabil, the probability of the color random variable given box. So as an example, like, uh, what is the probability that the color equals blue given a particular box? So, fairly obviously, the probability of blue given box A would be two-thirds. The probability of drawing blue given box B would be one-third. Okay, try to pick up the pace here a little bit. Bayes for idiots, part two. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there's two questions we want to answer. First of all, what are the posterior probabilities of the box type given that we picked that blue ball? Secondly, we want to put the ball back in, it, back into the small box, and we mix it around and we pick again. So recall that you still don't know which box you picked initially. Um, so the question is, what is the probability of drawing another blue ball? Okay, well, I know I know you know how to do this problem, so I sort of did a quick version of it using a little tree diagram here. The probability of each box, conditional probabilities, uh, of color given box, and then all you do is you multiply along the tree. You get your uh, your events of interest. Summing them up gives you the total probability of the event of interest, and then the posterior probability of each box type would then just be the probability of that particular scenario divided by the total probability. That's the sum. You should recognize that as like, you know, uh, conditional times prior divided by like the sum of all the events of interest, right? Okay, so in this case we work through that and it ends up that the posterior probabilities for each are a half. So if you're a reasonable person, and you did this experiment, 
you would still be 50-50 on, or you would, you would, okay, well, whereas before, um, you, your prior probability of drawing, say, box A was, um, a third, and given that you've drawn this blue ball, that belief kind of, like, jumps to a half. And likewise, your belief that you drew a tight B box drops from two-thirds to a half. So this shows how your posterior distribution is sort of like a shifting of your, your prior to different uh, proportions. Okay, I know you're like, I know all this, duh, there was I, one specific thing I asked you and now you've been talking for ten, five minutes, whatever. Okay, so this is what you want to know about, the, the prediction. So what's the probability of drawing a second blue given that you drew blue on the first go? Um, so you know, you had some answers that were different sort of sums, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what exactly you were doing. You'd have to you'd have to show me that in person, I think. But I mean, you see a thing like this, so I'm just going to move on. You you see a thing like this, and you're like, oh, well, look, it's a conditional probability. Why don't I just use Bayes' theorem again? Oh, okay. Well, the probability of blue two given blue one should be equal to the probability of blue one given blue two times. Okay. Well, this isn't going to work obviously, because there's uh, like a temporal sequencing happening. This question is about making a prediction of a future event that has yet to occur. So you like can't really do this sort of thing. So now what I'm suggesting to understand how you do it, you consider expected value and the concept of expected value. Now, before I go on, I should emphasize that this is not like, this is not proof. No, this is not like, okay, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm building an analogy between expected value and this prediction, uh, this like, this um, predictive probability, but they're not, they're not the same. It's just like, it's in, it's like a conceptual analogy and using your knowledge of this can help you to sort of see what's happening. Okay, so in our analogy, we let x be the posterior probabilities we derived. Uh, so typically in expected value, x is like a numeric coding of an event. So for example, if we wanted to talk about the expected value of a coin toss where heads is 1 and tails is 0, um, and the interpretation of expected value of x is sort of like what the sample mean converges to by the weak law of large numbers, QED. Now, in, in this example, the quote, event, is which box we selected. So that part of the analogy holds, that we're kind of, we're talking about some, of, some event versus a different event. Heads versus tails. Box A versus box B. But instead of calling, coding it as A equals 1, B equals 0, we associate the event... We associate the event with a value that represents our belief based on our evidence that we are, quote, in that event. Okay, so in our example, like, if, if this entire rectangle is like our sample space, A and B form a partition of the sample space, and this has area, or, you know, if area is proportional to probability, uh, this guy has like a third of the area and this guy has two-thirds of the area, right? And within those area, those, uh, the partition, like within each event, you know, you can shade the probability of blue. Uh, in this case, it was like two-thirds for A and one-third for B. So, uh, okay, in our example, the shaded regions... Uh, should have equal area under A and B. And this this represents or, you know, corroborates our calculation of the posterior probabilities that they were 50-50. So you could say that our belief about whether we have an A box or a B box, given that we drew a blue ball, is sort of evenly torn. Like, we, we have no uh, leaning either way. Okay, so to continue with the analogy. So we had expected value of X equals X, and I have sort of tried to explain how you can think about how x is like 
our posterior belief in what event we're in. Um, and now the idea is how to interpret this P of X. So in our case, it's, it's not the probability of X per se, but it's the probabilities of a future blue under A or B respectively. So obviously what I just said is no different. It's equivalent in definition to like the conditional probability. So to complete my analogy that I'm trying to, to build here, um, it's, it's not perfect, but it's something like the expected value of x equals sum of x p of x is kind of something like our expected probability for the next outcome or for like our, our prediction for the next outcome, if you will, is the sum of the extent of our belief about what event we're in times the probability of the outcome that we're interested in defining a probability of given our belief in the event that we're in. So in our example, um, you know, our posteriors were a half and a half and our conditionals were a third and a third. So we collide the posteriors with the conditional and we get a half. Um, in the coin problem from the exam, you collide your uh, posteriors with the conditionals and you get 0.75. So, I mean, one thing you could do uh, to sort of like hammer the point home for yourself would be to like literally get a box and three boxes and put like, you know, I don't know, two dimes and a penny in one of them and two pennies and a dime in the other two. And you could like, you could do this and you, you would actually, if you see if this prediction, if, if this predictive value holds, uh, or you could see if it holds by doing it a bunch of times, and I think you, you would find out rather quickly that, like, you know, the expected value for that random variable is a half. Um, and if you wanted to be really slick, you could simulate it in R, which is what I did in the video that I posted about six months ago. All right, bye.